Padgett. Um, I'm a professional freelance illustrator, uh, originally from the United States. I was born in Kentucky. But yeah, I grew up in a smaller town and I spent a lot of time as a kid uh, drawing. So my love for drawing started very early, drawing Godzilla, Godzilla monsters and robots and Ultraman and things of that nature. And so, you know, like most kids, but it just really kind of stuck with me because I loved exploring these other worlds and escaping, and out my, escaping my boredom, which that continued into my adulthood. How I, how I ended up in illustration and graphic design was sort of, I just kind of fell into it. Um, I was actually, when it came time to go to university, I was playing music, I played guitar and I was playing in a band and was very serious about it. So going to school was kind of secondary. And, um, but you know, you went just because, you know, you never knew what was gonna happen with the music. And while I was doing that, I, I was creating, when we'd have gigs, I'd create flyers, I'd do a lot of collage stuff or my own illustrations. And I always loved that process to marry what we were creating with some, even though they were posters, not videos, but they were, you know, marrying our, our image with a visual image that was going to be hanging in the, in the, wherever the gigs were in the bars and pubs. And at that time, a friend of mine's little brother told me about this art school, Cincinnati Academy of Design. I was accepted to the school. It's a, it was a two-year school. And generally, it was for uh, graphic design and art direction for like working in an advertising agency. So we did learn some illustration. Mike McGuire was a brilliant illustrator. And I learned a lot from him. So I went to school, finished school. I liked it, you know, but still music was very much part of my life. And I was playing music and after school, just bouncing around for different gigs. I worked in a screen printing place. I did my own t-shirts for a while that had my illustrations on it. Then the music kind of fell apart. The band fell apart as these things happen. And so I was focusing more on my art and I ended up getting a job at a uh, advertising agency called Barefoot in Cincinnati. Worked there for a few years and just, I ended up working in advertising for almost 15 years which was great because it taught me about discipline, you know, and it taught me about concepts and how to think conceptually. And, and also it, it taught me about doing, I worked on TV commercials at another agency called Wonder Group, and it taught me about animation. It taught me, and I met a lot of cool people along the way. And during all that time though, I still was doing gig posters for occasional bands I was in or I, I was hooked up with some of the local venues and I would do other for touring bands like they did stuff for Pelican, for the Bronx, Cannibal Corpse, a lot of like punk and hard, hard rock type stuff, Blue Manchu, um, bands like that. And it was a lot of fun and I always loved it, but I never, it's funny because even though I was in the industry, I knew there were people who had jobs that would send us, um, as an illustrator, they would, you know, send us their, their portfolio or postcards. But it wasn't until later in my career that I was like, you know, I, I really wasn't feeling fully satisfied. And it was after we moved here to France that um, I decided I was starting to get some more freelance gigs for my illustration. And I decided that it was time to sort of quit working at the ad agency and pursue this. And so that was like uh, nine years ago now, I believe. Well, really full time doing it probably seven years ago. So that's a long story, but that's how it ended up working. You know, I have clients all over the world now in the UK and and a few here in the US and in Germany. So it's it's pretty cool. It started, I guess, I'm trying to remember back when I was working at the ad agency, I worked with a couple um production houses doing animated videos for candy airheads i think it was and it's it's a candy that's in america and i would i i always did the storyboards but i also kind of drew the characters with them i never did the actual animation until on my own speaking of when i was talking about the um the children's book the first one we, i did with a friend of mine named Lori Deary. she wrote it and it was about it was called runaway imagination and i did a an ebook version where i just animated very simple the, the the illustrations 
And from there, I started messing with some stories that I had done on my own and did more frame by frame kind of style animation. And I, since then, I, I learned a bit more of what I could do with, with my limited talents and how to expand on that. And I have done very short, like greeting cards or, or even some of the, the journals that I've created illustrations for ask if you can do sort of a GIF, like, can you animate it for like two or three seconds? So I've done a couple of those things. But the video for you guys for Sonic Winter was like, I don't know. I don't know. I Even though I'd never done it, it's five minutes and 20 seconds long, I believe, probably differently than a normal animator in that I, I thought, okay, with what I have in my skill set, I'm going to look at it as basically just moving illustrations. I mean, I know it's kind of the same thing, but it's a little different. It's not full on. Pixar or Warner Brothers or Disney frame by frame animation. It's like taking, creating a really cool image, but then making some elements within that move, giving it life in its own way. And that's how I, my mindset was because that, that way I didn't feel so overwhelmed. And I did mix in some frame by frame elements within it. But I think if I were to do the whole thing frame by frame, we wouldn't be talking right now because I would still be working, probably still have three minutes to create, you know, because it's it's just very time consuming and to even do what I do. Uh, so that's basically my animation background. And yeah, for the future, I, I very much enjoyed working on this. And um, partly the the song really kind of drew me in. It's tied to a, a classic American legend. I mean, you know, with the story of Robert Johnson selling his soul to the devil. And everybody knows that story, who's a music, musician anyway. And it's very much part of the folklore of America. And that element and just the, the religious aspect of the, and the dark side of that and our human nature and uh, temptation and just failing and winning and all of that just, it conjure up, I, I like dark imagery at times. And when you have the devil, of course, there's going to be plenty of that. So this project was really, really fun for me to work on. Well, I actually, if I'm allowed to say, it was inspired by a Nick Cave song, a Nick Cave lyric, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, um, Higgs Bolson Blues. And there was a lyric in it, like, I don't, I'm paraphrasing, but it was something like the devil and Robert Johnson. I don't know who's going to rip off who. And I just thought it was very interesting, you know. And I thought, well, you know, part of the thing was that maybe that Robert Johnson is teaching the devil a thing or two about how to play guitar. And that's one of the, the reasons the devil sought him out. And so that's kind of what inspired that whole and again, it was as a musician, it's always, in the, you know, it's a famous story. So it was something that was very fun for me to create. And I did it just for myself. And it was great that you guys found it. And yeah, whenever I got your email, I was skeptical because anytime, because I get emails occasionally from people like, hey, I want to do that. I want to use you up to, to create something for me. And a lot of times it doesn't work out. So I was a little skeptical. But then I listened to the song and I was like, no, this this is perfect. It was weird. It was like, yeah, this you got to use it. You know, <laughs> you've got to use it. So that, yeah, that, and actually, the image itself is still again part of my evolution in my style. That was probably done two or three three years ago, maybe. It was soon after that Nick Cave record came out. Well, it all all starts over there on my drawing table, uh, or actually that's not true. Sometimes I, pre COVID, I would go to coffee shops and hang out and just sketch, you know, or, or I get a, actually a lot of inspiration visiting record stores. Not that I sit there and draw, but something about record stores and bookstores really inspire me. So anyway, it all starts there with the sketchbook. And if it's, if it's an actual assignment, you know, from a from a client, then it stands a lot of time me staring at like a blank piece of paper, and I don't have any 
freaking ideas. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then sketch some things out and then they're all terrible. And then I start panicking and then all of a sudden things start to click and then those stuck. And then it just goes through this whole process of winning and failing until you finally, I get some sketches I like, I tighten them up, scan them into the computer. And from there, I, I, I draw everything again digitally to tighten it up. And now I'll scan in some, I may paint some, some textures or, or use graphite. And uh, generally everything gets assembled in, in Photoshop at the end. So it's basically a mixed media, some, some analog and digital, even though the final piece is always digital. I don't actually paint anymore. And I like the ability to, while I'm working on it, be able to to experiment a little bit if I need to, if things aren't working out to sort of shift colors or whatever, much easier and quicker than if I were working traditionally. So, uh, and then, so that that's basically it. I mean, and, and now I've sort of allowed myself to borrow, if I find, I do a lot of searching on like public domain photographs, I might find some hands or something that I use instead of laboring over drawing hands all the time or just creating, distorting them in a way, redrawing them in a way that fits whatever I'm working on. So, um, and, and actually back, speaking of distorting, back to that original, The Devil's Muse, which was the name of the original illustration that you guys are using for the, the song. I liked distorting the devil and making him so giant on the the crossroads where where he was in the middle of the crossroads and and Robert Johnson on his shoulder. But the idea really was also that the legend surrounding Robert Johnson and the devil has become much bigger than Robert Johnson's music, actually, which is kind of a bummer. But that's just how it is. I mean, everybody say Robert Johnson, you think of the devil and all that. I don't think most people think of his music. So but that's how it goes. So anyway, I liked the idea of distorting the devil, making him really long and big and stretching his head. And, and, and I still like to do that with the figures because if, because I'm not a photographer, I like to, to, so I don't want to create things as you see them. I want to create things that are, that you don't see walking down the street because that's more interesting. And I think it can tell a story better in a different way. 